episode 62, part 2 of Kenya's premier sports video podcast, the Three Quarters Podcast. And as usual, we'd like to remind you to jump onto the hashtag Road to Japan to support the Kenya Simbas as they are still looking to qualify for the Rugby World Cup in 2019 in Japan. I'm Demi Madafil. Welcome to episode 62. I'm Ngaro Kamuya. So we start off with Badman of the Week yep. from our feature game, which is Impala versus Quinn's. Mm-hmm. Now, we had previously discussed, and I said, mine, I was so torn. Yeah. And you're like, ah, you'll pick by the time. I have not picked. <laughs> oh my gosh. Really? Yes. So, <laughs> two people. Um, I mean, yes, lots of people played well. Uh, generally, I mean, yeah. But um, two people who stood out for me were um, Impala number nine, that was Samson Onsomu, and Impala number 10, which was Anthony Nyandugisi. Mm-hmm. And. I think, oh, on this one I'll go with Nyando. Um, I think, uh, I mean, yes, Sam played well, he did. But there was some, I think, um, for me, Anthony did what a number 10 should do, creating chances for his backs, as in the, his kicks, his passes. I mean, there were cutout passes that just flew past all the Quinn's defenders, got to your winger, got to whoever it was. So for, for me, Anthony Nyando Gisi. Uh, I didn't think, by Samson and Somo's standards, I didn't think he had really a decent game because he he set very high standards. Yeah. That's why he wasn't in my list. I mean, I, I agree with you. My bad man of the week is Anthony Nyandegisi. At number 10, as I'm telling you, he was coming up against Isaac Ademo. I really didn't think he was going to be able to measure up to Isaac Ademo, taking into, into account the fact that uh, Isaac Ademo is a starting 10 at Kenya. Yep. But Nyando uh, had a very brilliant game. And his last, and his try. Uh, I overheard uh, just after the game that somebody was asking him how was he able, <laughs> was he able to make that try, and I was like, no, I just saw a couple of fatsos, and I was able, <laughs> he was wow. able to make, a, you know, he was able to slice through the Queen's defense. So, hands down, Anthony Nyandikisi, and not even just for his try, it was the way he got his backline moving, the way he got his centers involved, uh, Ishmael Mukayel. Uh, all of a sudden had a decent game, you know, George uh, All Okoa. of a sudden, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Kwemoi, who I thought was going to be a, a weak link, uh, also got into the game. So, hands down, hands down. Um, Anthony, 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 Anthony Nyandigis. Yep, wins by a landslide. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well yep. done to him. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> then we go into Kenyan rugby history, mm-hmm. uh, where we talk about Strathmore. Yeah. Um, yeah. Currently coached by uh, Mitchell Chola, who moved to Strathmore, now coached by John um, Bai. Yeah. And also uh, SNC... Who people don't a lot of people don't know that Malik is involved with uh, yes Malik and Demi is involved with Strathmore but the work he's doing with the boys is clearly showing. It, it is showing. So Strathmore FC, I must confess that this is the first time I was supported in Kenya Cup. <laughs> Reason being, uh, most of the guys I knew or my friends when we finished high, high school went to Strathmore uh, or went to play for Strathmore. So I had a chat with uh, Felix Osiemo, who's the chairman of Strathmore, just to understand uh, the history of of Strathmore FC. I must add that. Um, uh, from when we finished from Nakuru for the 90s there were not really new clubs that were being formed and there's actually more of clubs closing down and there's less information on those clubs the old Lindsay RFCs in the works so when we were 2004 uh, we had students who were at Strathmore University who were playing for other Kenya Cup t- teams and um, a couple of guys I must mention Michael Mbiu Felix Osiemo who's the, cap, who's the chairman now uh, Wycliffe Kibet who used to play uh, number six uh, for, for, for Strathmore so they approached Isaac Mwangi who was the sports director the sporting director for Strathmore at that time and uh, Isaac Mwangi in turn approached um, a gentleman by the name I must call Paul Ching Paul Ching is a dean of students and Paul Ching initiated uh, the process of start, starting uh, Strathmore RFC so Michael Mbiu approached uh, Impala, former Impala, uh, Bill Odongo, uh, to help with coaching. And uh, Bill Odongo had commitments at that time, and therefore he referred them to Mitchell Chola. And that's how Mitchell Chola came on board as a Stratton uh, coach. He was a player coach by the, yeah. at the beginning, because that's when Mitchell, <laughs> Mitchell Chola was just finishing uh, his, um, his, his, his career. So he started off as a player coach, a couple of players, and then uh, uh, they started off, of course, in the ESS, and that's how they were able to end promotion in 2008. So, I also must add that there's a famous chant, 27, um, for Strathmore. And anyone who's, anyone who's followed Strathmore RFC, there's 27. You'll always see them in you know, shots in Roman numbers, 27. So, 27 basically means uh, you, the grind, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. 365 days a year. When you add all those numbers, they come it comes to, up yes. to number 27. I remember I was told that a few years ago and I was like, that is very smart. Yeah. Now, what I found out, I knew about that one, but what I found out is that Benjamin Aimba, 
is actually the one who came up with it. There's a time he was coaching Strathmore and Strathmore was starting. So a couple of guys have passed there. Um, they've gone into the Kenya Cup final once in 2013 when they were hammered by Nakuru. But look, they to start a team from scratch with barely nothing and just students and guys who just play with passion because remember Strathmore attracts most of the guys who are coming from high school. So guys just play play their hearts out, not 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 too much money involved, but guys just play their hearts out. And it's produced a couple of the guys. We have Billy Odiambo played at Strathmore, Alex Olava played at Strathmore. Uh, I remember my friend late Joshua Gadumbi uh, played at Strathmore. Uh, the late Geoffrey Gedaiga also captain Strathmore. So yeah, they've produced a couple of guys and I must add also Paul Odera, under 20, coached Strathmore at some time. Tito Duke uh, coached Strathmore and uh, Fox, Willis Ojal also coached Strathmore at some point. So as you aptly put it, Micho Chola, is the one who's synonymous with Strath, but now it's John Bai. Yeah. So we move on to the shorter version of the game. Yeah. Uh, and we're looking at Shooter's <coughs> performance at the Vancouver Sevens. Mm -hmm. um, and first game, played against France, 114-7. Second game against Spain, hammered Spain, 43-0. That, uh, that was a very good game to watch. Um, and then they played Fiji. We keep meeting Fiji. Mm -hmm. Narrowly lost, 24-21. I think... I think we're getting better, at least, you know, we're not getting hammered by Fiji, which is good. So now we're in the quarterfinals um, against England. Um, let's see how late, that goes. Late, yes. later on. Later on. Yes. Yeah. So what do you say, um, you know, performance-wise? I've been really impressed by Colin Sinjara's performance over the last, over the last Definitely. two legs. And uh, not really from a try-scoring point, but more number one defense, number two breakdown, number three creating chances. I think he's had a very good outing in Las Vegas and Vancouver. Uh, and it's it's been a good outing for the Shuja team because we made it to the main cup quarterfinals in the last two tournaments, i.e. Las Vegas and Vancouver. Um, I said this when Innocent Simi was appointed, and I said uh, Namkos is a brilliant rugby mind. If he's given the platform and if he's given what he needs, he can actually produce some very good results for Kenya. I took a lot of slack when I made that comment. I can, uh, imagine, <laughs> I can imagine, because I've, I've, I've been one of the people who stood by Namcos from the beginning, yeah. and I'm like, look, with all the things he's facing from the union, I think he's doing fine. Yeah, he's, do, he's, he's doing pretty good, and yeah. I took a lot of slack when I made that comment, but we can actually see what's happening. And I like the fact that he's phasing out the older guys, and the new guys, Arthur Weiras, the Jeff Oluoch, Sami Oliech came in the last two years. Um, uh, I mean, Andrew, the Andrew Mondes and the Kuala Zinjaras are, are their on way. their way out. Yeah. Yes. So and the younger guys are playing with more sort of. Sorry for cutting you off. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yes. The younger guys are playing with more confidence. I remember at some point were like, you know, they don't look very confident in the game, but it's coming. It's coming. So it means they've been talked to. Something's happening. Something is happening. And and Namkos, he has, he has the beauty of having played at that level. So. And even when you watched him play, you, can, you could see like this guy really understood the game. So he's passing that over to the players. And like, look, we're getting to the main cup quarters now. I, if he's given another two, three years, I actually see us guys being a very formidable team. But look, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> Step we, at a time. <laughs> yeah, we had a very good outing in Vancouver, or decent outing the last two. We went to the main cup quarters. And let's see if the team can build on this going forward. Yeah, let's see if we can break that plateau. Exactly. We, we seem to get to the quarterfinals and then. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, best of luck to the boys yeah. and very well done to Namkos, you yeah. know, with his team. Mm -hmm. um, so now we come back home. Mm -hmm. Well, not that they're not part of us, yeah. but we come back home and uh, we're talking about the KRU in, uh, elections, yeah. which will be on Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, that's March 21st. Yeah. Uh, what do you have to comment about that? I know um, the guys who are up for election, uh, guys like Thomas Opio, yeah. um, guys like Jeff Gangler, mm -hmm. Joshua Roni, uh, Moses Ndali and John Kilonzo. Mm -hmm. So I... I the politician in you, I know, wants to take this away. So please. Uh, there are quite a few stories going around. We don't know exactly which format it's going to take because you remember the Kerry Constitution is a cake and it's not in line with the Sports Act. Uh, there was talk about uh, having everyone vacate the office and have them uh, contest uh, or rather seek a fresh mandate. But uh, there is that. It could go that way, which means it's an SGM. Or the other way it could go is uh, the usual AGM that happens every year. So the people who are up for re-election, as you've said, is Thomas Thomas Opio. Uh, I think that's that's the one everyone is focusing yes. on. Yes, Thomas Opio, <laughs> definitely. Who's um, popularly known as Tanu. He's a current vice chairman of, uh, of, of Kenya Rugby Union and former uh, chairman of Mondays. Uh, Moses Ndale has made it uh, clear that he wants to go for vice chairman, or he wants to contest for vice chairman this year. Uh, the secretary, uh, Gangla, Gangi, 
uh, who's coming up against Jack, former CEO, Jack Okoth of, 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 of Kenya Rugby Union, which is going to be an interesting matchup. Very, uh, um, very, very, very. And I'm sure Jack has done his campaigning. Yeah, everyone, everyone has done their campaigning. What I can say about it is, look, whoever comes in, comes in. But uh, look, we need to... We need to get we need to get some focus in the union, and and we need to stop this politicking, and we need to put our players first. We need to put our fans second, and only then will the game grow. So whoever comes in on Wednesday, I'll be there. Whoever comes in on Wednesday, I hope that uh, you have your head screwed on right because we need that in the union. Definitely yeah. need that. Put the game first. Yep. So we move on to the international rugby scene mm -hmm. where we start off with Six Nations. Mm -hmm. uh, our feature game was Ireland uh, versus Scotland mm -hmm. and that ended 28-8 uh, to Ireland. Yes, 28-8 to Ireland, tries by Jacob Stockdale, uh, two tries. Shona Cronin, a uh, reserve hooker, and uh, Connor Murray scoring. And uh, a bonus point win for Ireland. And of course, uh, Ireland now the 2018 RBS Six Nations uh, champions. Not West, sorry, Six, Six Nations champions. Actually, weren't there only four tries? Yes, there were only four tries. So, oh, yes, yeah, yes. so Ireland now are the 2018 uh, Six Nations champions. With one game to go. With one game to go and France losing to Ireland. Uh, sorry, England losing to France, 22-16. Yes. <laughs> uh, Wales versus Italy was happening sometime today. So anyway, Ireland have won the, um, the title for 2018. <laughs> then we move on to Super Rugby. Yeah. Uh, match day four, we mm -hmm. had Lions versus Blues as our feature game. Yeah. Um, Lions lost that, 35-38. That is a... That is a serious game like down blues. to the last minute? exactly down to the last two minutes and uh, blue scoring a try in the last minute and winning away i didn't expect and lions have been the formidable team what just is me about super rugby is the fact that it's a cycle it's not dominant like football where you have manchester united and the other teams dominating it's a cycle uh five six years ago lions were the whooping boys they are now you know got into the finals and uh they are the formidable team from south africa blues were the guys back in the days now they are suffering so the first win very good game by the blues and to get a win away kudos to the blues the other results of course i must say the highlanders beat the thomas 33 15 uh, the rebels beat the brumbies 33 10. <sighs> the hurricanes beat the crusaders 29 19. <laughs> we had the sharks beat the sun wolves 50 22. we had the reds beat the bulls uh, 2014 and we had the haguares beat the warriors 38 28. i want to know our island followers i'm sure they're very happy yeah <laughs> guys remember give us all your support follow us on instagram like our page on facebook and subscribe to our youtube channel i'm Demi Madofio. And I'm Naroka Muya. Stay tuned for part three.